Hello guys, Tivik here and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Or I should probably say Tivik's Space Program because we are launching these Kerbals into space. Hopefully not upside down like that. For those of you who watched my live stream on uh, the Thursday the 4th of April, you will have seen me launch a couple of rockets and uh, actually went around the moon and back. However, we are going to start from scratch. This is going to be a let's play and we are going to take this step by step and actually get somewhere but one step at a time. First of all I thought we'll go through the different buildings that we have here currently. There is a tracking station which we can use to look at the space around us and see what current missions are in progress. We have none at the moment. Here you see our planet Kerbin, which is not the biggest of planets. I think this is actually our area where we lift off. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe, maybe it's this one. Um, this planet has two moons. The moon and Minmus. Moon is a small body that is very similar to the Earth's moon. It has no atmosphere. It's quite small and it circles around Kerbin. Then we have Minmus, a small icy chunk. These will be our first goals, um, but let me set out the plan for our little space agency. Um, first of all, we want to launch, we want to get into orbit, and we want to make sure that we can circle this planet and come back down in one piece alive. After that we're going to aim for some orbital maneuvers, learn a little bit on how to actually change the path that we are flying around a planet or well circling around a planet. We're gonna learn a little bit about satellites and how to deploy them and eventually we're going to explore the whole system all the way out to ELO. Yule. Stress. Duna. And Kerbin, of course. We're gonna go to Eve. And to Moho. And even around the sun itself. Bright beacon as it is. But, as I said, first let's get going for the first thing there. Um, we have our space plane hangar here. We're not going to go for space planes now, that will be later. We have our launch pad, this is where we send up our rockets, and then we have the vehicle assembly building, which I will now hop into, because this is where most of the magic is done. Um, we're going to build a small rocket that will be able to take us out into space, maybe circle the planet, and return down again. I'm going to make a small rocket. We have these tabs up here. Pods, Propulsion, Control, Structural, Aerodynamic, Utility and Science. Pods are the parts which keep your kerbals, for instance the cockpits, there are a couple of them, or the pods. Then there's the lander can, which is used for, for instance, uh, the lander modules. We'll make one of those later. There are also some probe bodies for satellites, and of course it's the Stayputnik. The Stayputnik is, um, well, a very small one. So, we're not going to be using that one, I can 
promise you that. At least not now. We might want to launch that later. But I'm going to start out with this small pod here. Now, you build the rocket up and down. Well, not upside down, but from the top down, really, to plan the stages properly. This is the hatch. Some ladders. And let me zoom in a bit. We will want to place something on top of this so that we can, in a controlled fashion, get back down. So I'm going to go to Utility and grab a Mark 16 parachute. This parachute will uh, slow down this pod, hopefully enough, so that it can land safely on the ground again. Okay. Then we will need fuel and propulsion. And for this first one, I'm going to use one of these uh, FLT-800 fuel tanks. Um, it has... It's pretty much the same as this. Yeah, it is. Um, but I'm forgetting something. Um, these rockets need to be controlled. And we have something called the SAS modules. The advanced SAS module uh, is a little bit better than the SAS module, so we're going to use this. One more, thing, one more thing that I forgot. All right, I'm forgetting something very important. Not that one. It's a bit big. Stack decoupler. I'm going to explain what these do in a minute. Um, this decoupler here will, once we hit that stage, decouple that pod up there from the rest of the rocket, so this will go flying out into the space or fall back to the planet, which we will need. This one here will control our wings and uh, rockets so that we can get a decent uh, attitude, not spin around, not turn too much, things like that. I wonder if this one can be used for that. I don't know. So, propulsion. We have one tank. Maybe I should make it two tanks so that we have plenty of fuel to go. And I will put in a liquid fuel engine on this. Now, I don't know if this rocket will be enough to go into space. To do, to know that, you need to sum up the weight of these modules. Um, and I'm going to do a very quick check on that. Um, let's see, that one is one and... Together with this, it's definitely one. These aerodynamic utility, where is it? Structure. This one is. Oh, it's a stack decoupler. Oh, it's a big one. Uh, this one has barely no weight. This one has a total mass of four, so nine, ten, twenty. Plus, this is a mass of about 22, 23. So we have a mass of 23. This needs to be multiplied with the constant of gravity, which is on Kerbin 9.81 meters per second, which means I was saying 22, right? That would be a mass weight of 215, 215. And if you look at this one here, it has an engine max power of 200. We wouldn't get off the ground with this. However, what we're going to do is we're going to give this one some help. I'm going to split this up in two stages. Like so. Then, we are going to add some solid fuel boosters. Two of them, actually. 
So, let's do that. Uh, we will need to get some radial decouplers. And these little ones, they help out by... Okay, let's see. Yep, that will do. Uh, they, These couplers make it possible for me to detach machines. Like, for instance, this solid fuel booster. Look. Now, I will want to put this one a bit further down. There. This might actually work. There is no guarantee for that, I can promise you that. Um, let's see. I'm actually going to need to get the stability enhancer on this one. While we wait. Okay, so... The first stage will be to fire the boosters and our main thruster. These boosters... Let's see, they have a low mass... And a very good max power. However, they cannot be shut down, so this is very dangerous if you don't do this right. And then we want to decouple them. Let's see. The first step is to fire up the engines and then decouple these stability stabilizers. Actually, I'm gonna put them up there. I make them hmm I wonder if I can make them go further out because right now they're touching this and that's a good way to get a destroyed space shuttle let's see That might work. Now, if we can get all these to decouple at the same time, um, this rocket will probably be very unstable, though. Uh, so I am going to add some winglets. That won't be able to take off without touching this. I hope so. And these will also have winglets on this side here. There. This might not work at all, or it might work very well. There is one more thing that I need to add. My goal of this one is that these two, with this one, will be enough to send this stage up into space with this on top. But before we can do that, I will also add one of these... Where's the... RCS... There it is. Oh, not that one. That one. RCS is... Well, I think RCS stands for Radial Control System, or something like that. And putting four of these in, up there, will help me when we get into space. I'm gonna put four there, and then four... Or there. Building these and talking at the same time can be kind of tricky. Alright, so this is gonna be the TSP, which is for Tivic Space Program. Um, T 
PSP 1. I will probably have a lot of things here, yeah. I will show you some of these at some point, but let's give this one a shot, shall we? Here we are on the launch pad on this very special day for for the Kerbals. The rocket, TSP-1, is ready for launch and it's the first time ever for a manned flight. Let's take a look from Halson Kerman's perspective in his pod. It's not a big pod, but it will do for him. And this is where he will guide this rocket into orbit and back down safely to Kerbin. So, we'll ask him to throttle up. Good. About that much should be enough. And now, we'll have a countdown from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, ignition, 3, 2, 1, liftoff. We have liftoff for TSP-1, the first manned craft of the Kerbals. We have a little bit of overheating on our thrusters, but that should be fine. And we are out of solid fuel, so they are jetsoned to fall back to the ground. As we reach about 10 kilometers, Halson will initiate a turn to about 45 degrees. As soon as the last liquid fuel is out in the main thruster, the secondary th stage will detach and the main stage thruster will take over. This main stage to hopefully take Halson into orbit. Failure here is not an option. Let's take a look at the trajectory. Well, Halson is gaining altitude, but to save up on some fuel, he's now going to go until he reaches the apoapsis, which is the highest point in his journey towards space. And he will look focus the craft in the direction of travel so that when he reached the apoapsis he will burn and push the craft outside the atmosphere and he's gonna be at the apoapsis in about 20 seconds so he's ready to fire up the rockets again there he goes and he's now burning to increase his orbit around the planet. And he is running very low on fuel. And he will only have a very short time before the fuel runs out. He calls it and aborts, because the fuel will not last to put him into orbit. 
One last burn. Maximum fuel. We'll take him back into the atmosphere fairly soon. But he can, from his view, see stars, but he could also turn his shuttle around and watch Kerbin as he pass over it. Now, to make a safe return, he will have to turn his craft. Making a careful turn to fire his thrusters, retrograde as they call it, against the orbit he's making. It does not have enough fuel for a long burn, but it should lower his orbit a little bit. Once that is done, he once again will turn his craft. And then, once he is in a decent angle, like so, the last stage will be jettisoned. He will spend the final few moments soaring towards Kerbin in his pod. Now he has reached the apoapsis and has started the descent for a splashdown in the waters estimated time to splashdown will be 3 minutes he can afford himself a look around Kerbin is small from up here. Very small. But sooner or later he will be entering the atmosphere at quite the speed. Already on the ground, engineers are contemplating the next step. What can they do? What can they do to get him further into the universe? Halson, he's enjoying his place in the pod. He knows that once he returns to Earth, there will be tests, medical checks, and of course, a debriefing where he gets to tell everybody what he has seen. Because he's been where no Kerbal has ever been before. To space. Soon he'll enter the atmosphere. And thus, the shuttle, well not the shuttle, the pod, will heat up at about 50,000 meters. He has now entered the upper atmosphere and is rapidly sinking now towards the ground.
and soon his pod will start get slowed down from the air pressure and he's entered thicker atmosphere now and flames can be seen in the pod well they're from the outside he breathes a sigh of relief altimeter showing well twenty thousands rapidly going down to fifteen thousand and he's down to ten thousand this is where he will fire the parachute to slow him down for a safe landing he will land just off the coast not very far from where the debris from his previous rocket fell the parachute will stay in drag mode so that it will slow the pod down but eventually at the correct altitude it will open at least Halson hopes that it will on the ground Mission Control has already sent out helicopters to locate him. And all over the planet people are watching under television sets to see the first manned flight into space. But what awaits there? Who knows? And as the pod splashes down into the ocean, Halson Kerman can hear the helicopters closing in. And he knows that he will be picked up and brought back home.